So the Yankees got clobbered tonight. 10 to 1 Mariners needed it. They were really free falling. At least it gives them a little bit of a respite. But even with that, you think about the Yankees. I mean, they were 15 and 5 the last 20 games coming into tonight with, you know, their entire team almost, the starting lineup, if you will, on the injured list. And why are we showing you this? These are the teams with the highest payroll in the game this year because. You know, we're trying to figure out what makes this so special for the Yankees. Look, they, they they pay out a lot of money. And as you see, four of those five teams are good on that list, with the exception mm -hmm. of the Giants. That's a big part of it. But but what else surprises you about overall the Yankees with all of these injuries still playing good baseball? Well, as we mentioned with this graphic, the, the ability for these teams to have depth and to have quality big league guys, one through 25. So if some guys go down, they can plug people in that, you know, look, could be everyday players elsewhere. And we're now with, with the Yankees during this stretch, you know, they've had some production from guys they didn't anticipate. Now, boy, he, he did it last year, but Urshela has swung the bat well. Gary Sanchez has come back, hit some home runs. But you've also got to recognize that during this stretch, you know, coming into this series against Seattle, they've only played five games against teams that were over 500. And that was the Twins and the Diamondbacks. And, you know... Outside of that, they're beating up on teams that are not that good. Can we give Brian Cashman some love? I mean, he built the depth of the organization, not just the 25 guys, but AAA on down. I mean, he's calling up guys people have never heard of. Mike Ford, Talk, Talkman. I mean, have you heard of him? I mean, I have because they're hitting for the Yankees. Oh, that's all right. But before that, have you? Urshela? Yeah, Talkman, Talkman was with uh, was with Colorado. Urshela was uh, was he in Toronto? I mean, a couple but he's of picked up Cleveland. He's picked up some guys though that you know. Look, at, I don't think he expected them to produce. No, no and they've, they've come up, and, and they've been, I don't want to say sporadic, but they've been, the, the timing's been good. Herman, you know, the Well, he was good Herman. last year. He's he got good, good stuff. Year. They've been waiting on this. But, I mean, you lose Severino. Right. You lose well, you, Judge, I, you lose Stanton. We could do a whole show of who uh, they It's lost. amazing. And they, they're still right there. They have, I mean, I know they have, they've played a weak schedule. I get it, but at the same time, they're still, and they're beating these teams. They're bludgeoning these teams with their offense. It's been it's scary when they get these guys all back. I think the beauty of Cashman is, look, he get, and he, he's in New York, and so he's got a ton of payroll, so you don't, you, you're not going to give him credit. But he has done a great job. And I think, I think if you look at it, right, he rebuilt that team in a snap. I mean, they didn't have well, a rebuild. That, that was his best thing that he ever did, getting rid of Miller and Chapman, and, and, and they were competitive in, in the ALC. So there's something to be said, though, about the arrival of those young players, whether it was Aaron Judge or Sanchez, I don't think anybody anticipated that those guys would make the impact as quickly as they did. Agree. And because of that, you know, again, Brian Cashman, give him credit. He he adjusted, and it wasn't going to be a couple of year rebuilding and retooling and everything. It's, it's like, holy cow, we got something here. So it was just, it, it was really just sort of a transition. You know, basically, they got rid of Alex. That was the thing. When they said, we're cutting ties with Alex, you thought that it was going to go this way. It didn't. It actually went... Boom. Well, uh, Judge, Judge is the piece for me that kind of yep. keeps it all together. My, my buddy Doug Minkiewicz, who's the AAA manager for the Tigers, had put a grade on Judge, the highest grade he's ever put on a player when he was with the Twins as manager. And they're like, what are you crazy? He goes, look, this guy's six seven, unbelievable makeup, can play right field, hits homers, puts athletic, a grade Athletic, athletic as heck. He That's said he's the best minor league player he's ever put a grade on in like seven or eight years, and he got buried for it. And, when Aaron Judge is on the field, he's pretty amazing. Yeah, and he's yeah. another one of these guys that's out. So the Yankees, uh, despite all that, they get clobbered tonight. They've been playing well overall. And they're still chasing the Rays, who are in first place coming into today. So not pictured in that highlight is Chris Bryant. You know, we've been talking all year about Bryant. When's Bryant going to get When's Bryant gonna get going? I guess the question is, has he gotten going? He's three home runs the last three games. Now tonight he's over two, two walks. He has been drawing walks all year. Is he back? Is he back to the MVP that, that we've come to know and love? It's hard to be back to the level he was. I think the expectations were put so high on him when he came up. All the hype before he got, remember, he was the first guy they ever talked about manipulating service time with. When's Chris, he had the big billboard. When's Chris Bryant going to be here? <laughs> he comes up, he wins all the awards, he wins MVP, they win the World Series. And then he, has, he gets hurt and he has a slightly down, a, a down year for Chris Bryant. I mean, the expectations are so high for this kid. And he's done it all. He, he plays multiple positions. He's done it all. He hits for power. Gets big hits, walked them off. I mean, this guy, the sky is the limit, but just give him a little bit of time. But, yes, he's on the track back. It's almost like the MVP season is his floor, right? Like, that's automatic, and now each year should be an improvement. <laughs> and so he, he's hurt last year, and that's a shoulder injury. And for a hitter and any type of power hitter, I mean, 
that that's debilitating because not only you know maybe when it's feeling okay, still in your mind you're thinking, man, okay, if I do this swing, what if I? And then you get a little stinger or something down the arm, that that can screw up a whole season. And it basically did from a power standpoint. And so now he's hit some home runs here, so everybody's going, okay, the power's back. That was a concern. He's still he's still on pace to hit, you know, driving over a hundred, have over a hundred runs. I mean, it's as AJ said. We want to see it's got to be way up here. I mean, it's crazy because you talk about the injury, and that was essentially last year. He had, besides the MVP overall, he had three phenomenal seasons in a yeah. row. Rookie of the year, three great seasons in a row. He had one down year, and he was hurt. And, and we were just Someone once told me once, if you hit a, if you hit 30 home runs, don't do it because then teams will start expecting you. Players and fans will. So right. if you just hit 10 or 15, then they expect 10 or 15. You win an MVP. They expect you to be Mike Trout and try to win the MVP every year. So yeah. taper it. Try and hit like yeah, 18. Hey, he won it, won it too early in his career. That's right. Exactly. You can't win it that early. You can't do that. <laughs>